here we are. Um, as I said, Kennet Valley Thoroughbreds and Hot to Trot Racing. Um, both of them, between the two, um, Hot to Trot, we lease about, uh, we have two groups of six horses on the flat and a group of six on the jumps. Um, so invariably, we're taking on uh, about 18 to 20 horses leased in training every season. Um, so we've, been, we've operated since 2012 when we started off with six horses um, and uh, we've, had a, we've ha had a number of winners. Um, I have to say in, in 2016 we thought we might be nearing the end when we had one winner in the season. And, um, but thankfully um, the key is with everything in racing is to try and make it fun and I think we were lucky enough to have a group of members who really enjoyed their company if not watching their horses trailing towards the rears and fields, um, that they kept on. And 2017, we were extremely lucky and we had heartache win the Queen Mary in our colours. And um, hopefully the scenes in the winner's enclosure were, uh, had never been seen before and, um, and, and inspired um, the fact that anyone can get involved with our fantastic sport. Um, and it's something both the syndicates were very keen to champion is, is try to get more people into the sport. And, and it's incredible how many examples we hear of, of people getting into the sport via um, dipping their toe in the syndicate to start with. I believe John Dance, um, the, owner, uh, the owner of Lawrence, uh, was involved with the syndicate to start with. Um, we ourselves have had people graduate on to outright own ownership. Um, only the other day I was chatting to one of our trainers, William Knight, um, who, had a, who has, as many trainers do their own syndicates, um, and he had someone who was in for the part of a grand all in for the year, and he had his wealthy mate from up the road would like a couple of horses and went and bought two yearlings um, on his own, which just shows the potential. We can't rely on the big, the big cheeses of the industry forever, and we need to make our own luck. And bringing more people in and making it more all-inclusive, as, as in places like Australia, I think we really have to... To, to take that stance. Um, so why would, why would a breeder lease? Um, his, historically, uh, um, owners and breeders, uh, the commercial breeder might have sold the colts and keep the fillies. Um, and when perhaps prize money was in slightly better terms, one could perhaps keep the better fillies and, and the prize money return would be better. Um, tr uh, prize money, sadly, is not so good nowadays. Um, so to avoid paying training fees is often a um, an attractive proposition for a breeder. Um, you still, of course, own the, the filly or, or gelding, but in most cases, we're dealing with fillies here invariably. Um, and obviously, to, to potentially add value to your horse whilst, whilst effectively the costs have stopped during that lease period. Um, the potential negatives um, are, um, of course, the, the selling aspect. If you go into the leasing, um, and, and you, do, you are lucky enough to have a good horse that wins its maiden on debut and you get the big phone call saying, we'd like to buy your horse. Well, I'm afraid that is the negative because for a syndicate, if, if one was to sell all the horses that win their maiden and, and, and off they go to foreign climes and we keep all the horses that no one wants, then we'll, we'll end up getting frequent, um, frequent flyer points at uh, Brighton. So uh, we will, um, not that there's anything wrong with that and we have many slow horses, um, but, uh, and we all enjoy it. Winning at any level is important, and the price of a winner is important. But, but that said, we all need, certainly the likes of ourselves, we need that big horse to really give us that, um, to, to give that bit of momentum. Um, perhaps an, another um, aspect might be that um, breeders might say they don't have the influence over the race planning or the choice of the trainer, and they might say, well, as a syndicate, um, when, when you've got your 92-rated filly, do we go for a big handicap or do we go for black type? Well, that's the discretion of, of the lessor, um, who they lease it to. And um, I know from my, my side, then we would always try to, we know that we want to continue and, and ex, um, explore relationships with breeders going forward. So targeting black type is absolutely crucial. Um, and we had a, a pertinent point the other day. We had a filly who was lucky enough to win a listed race at Sandown, and she won an £18,000 prize. Um, the, the same day up at York, there was the charity, big three-year-old charity sprint worth 60 grand to the winner. And our filly would have probably had a good chance in that, but we know our, we know our place and we want to continue the relationship. So we were delighted to win the listed race. Um, obviously, obviously, otherwise, if, if you are leasing, then invariably the syndicate will want to race in their own silks and name. And we, we were offered a horse a couple of years ago who said, oh, we'd like it to run on our silks though. And I'm afraid that was a, something that's non-negotiable. Um, and obviously the prize money side, well, it, there, there, is a, there is the option, of course, that, I mean, we, we do it, um, some breeders do stay in for a leg or a half, and, and obviously they, they receive their, their percentage of prize money and, and sort of get involved but with the race planning. But in any case, we, we always, personally, we, we like to consult with breeders and, and run, in, run in races which are beneficial to the horse that we, that we do lease. 
Um, I try to be sort of, um, I know some people might have a few questions, but I wanted to try and um, put a few sort of potential questions and answers um, for sort of a, a typical leasing model. Um, and of course, and this is, replies to both Flat and National Hunt, does, does Lessee retain all prize money? And what happens to MOPS and uh, Plus 10, which may now become the, the BPPS prizes? Um, well, that, that's uh, it, generally yes. I mean, for our part, we, the syndicate I manage, Hot to Trot Racing, we, 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 our agreement is that we will put our horses in training with the top people around. And these trainers are generally some of the most expensive. And, and for that part, we, uh, we do like to uh, retain all of the prize money. Um, incentives to race the horses, um, such as MOPS and, uh, and B BPPS or Plus 10, are, are very attractive, obviously. And, and, I think, and I think potentially incentives like this will encourage people, whether they are trainers or, or syndicates, to, to lease British bred filly stroke gelding. So I, I think from that perspective, leading on from the earlier comments, I think it will, will really help. Um, can, the, can, the seller let, can the lessor sell the horse during the lease? Well, that is up to whether you've got what lease agreement you've got in place. Um, generally, we've, we've only ever agreed to lease agreements where they cannot sell the horse during the lease because, as, as the points I was making earlier. However, there are leases around where people perhaps have um, options in there where the syndicate might be given a, a percent, an agreed percentage if the horse, if the lease is broken. Um, and and it's certainly in other places, certainly perhaps towards the bottom of the market, I know it happens in France quite a lot, having a right to buy during the lease. Um, can be options, but in general, we've, we've focused on trying to get quality, and ultimately, if someone's got a very nice filly, they probably don't want us having the right to buy it, because the whole point is they want to bring it back to, to breed from in the future, and, and having, having terms in there, obtaining parts of the uh, equity in the horse is just not feasible, because they're going to have to put it through public auction, and it's not going to be feasible. Um, on, on the, who pays for the associated cost during the off-season? Well, it, it, during, we, we would in, invariably try to take them on once they, they've gone into full training. Um, over the, during the off-season, many of the breeders we deal with have studs, so they go back there, and we generally wouldn't expect to be billed. But obviously, if they don't have a stud, well, we would, we would probably um, we talk about it. Um, is, is the lessee obliged to insure the horse for the lesser? Well, this is something I'm learning about. Generally, the flat, we, we wouldn't. Um, but the National, National Hunt world, it's an interesting one, and we're only finding our feet. We've had, a, we've had our first go at um, leasing National Hunt mares this past season, and, um, and, and so very much I'm learning. Um, and obviously Kim's going to talk about that um, more in a minute. And um, leasing National Hunt mares um, is, is, is becoming more and more attractive with the, with the mares program, with the excellent work um, the TBA have done on that. And, um, and one of the parts is obviously the risk in national hunt racing is higher and some, some lessors do ask that their horse is insured. Um, insurance rates for national hunt horses is quite a lot higher. So for, for us, um, we, we sort of, we, we have a view that we'd, we'd cap that because it, it's, it one, if one does have a, a mare worth £100,000, which we want to be very lucky enough to earn one own like that, um, the, the premium on that would be so prohibitive that um, I, I don't think it's probably realistic. Um, extraordinary veterinary cost during the lease. Um, we, we, in, we invariably try to return the horse um, sound of limb, I mean, and sound of, uh, or, or least sound of, in, in a state to breed from, and um, such things like colic, um, and those we, we would generally cover during the lease. Um, and, and also, and in terms of the, the being kept informed, the lessee, um, uh, uh, that we, we would keep our, um, our sort of getting the lessees and lessors and muddled up now. Um, we would keep our lessors up to date with, uh, with news on the horses and, um, and what the plans would be with them. Um, from the criteria that we would look for, um, which is, it is a tough one when it comes to, we've talked, lots of talk about um, staying fillies, um, precocity, and, and our over focus on it. I'm afraid that I, we're not doing our part on that front because from a leasing perspective, um, first of all, quality is, is obvious and confirmation is obvious, but precocity is one. If you are leasing a, a very backward horse that you think may run, won't run at two and may run before June of its three-year-old career, that is quite a big commitment to go for. And I'm afraid the leasing model tends to, although we are always patient and if ever we commit to a lease, we'd always take a very patient approach. Um, precocity is advantageous. Um, there's no denying it. And precocity is, it doesn't mean limited, but we'd... Uh, I, in general, we would like to think you'd have something that has a chance of running it too um, on the flat. 
um, and over jumps it as a, as a bumper filly. Um, and performance in training, we haven't leased many fillies in training, but it is a very interesting idea, I've always thought. There are a number of horses bought at public auction, uh, um, say on the flat as three-year-olds, who, who perhaps go on and race for different trainers. And, and we have, last year, we, we had a, a filly that kept, was in that mould, who's, who's raced on as a, a, for our new trainer at, at four. And it's a very interesting angle for people trying to target black type, and it's very attractive from our perspective, because we're very happy to put the training fees towards it and, uh, and that person to, um, to chase that. Um, agreeing on the suitable trainer, well, that's probably an, an easier part, but um, as I said, we'd always try to match up a, a trainer that's suitable for the type of horse we're, we're racing and, and also for our members as well. Um, and geographically, because we've had generally our, uh, certainly the hot trot uh, base, we have 80 members in each syndicate, we have to try to spread them around geographically around the country a bit, and invariably we're southern dominated. Um, so we've, uh, we've tried to have horses in Yorkshire, we've had to try and have horses in Newmarket, um, in Lambourne and uh, Cheshire, um, and try to spread people around a bit so that when we have when we have runners at Newbury, we don't have everyone going, and when we have runners at Thirst, we don't. Um, and, that, and that's sort of fairly obvious, even though it's, it's not easy, to be honest. Um, so so if, you, if you were a breeder and you had a filly to lease, well, it depends, obviously, whether you're, if you have a yearling filly, for example, at the moment, um, are you, if, if it's in a sale, well, it's fairly, you're in a, a straightforward position, but of course, um, leasing can be the, the, the horses you can buy, you can, it means you perhaps can give yourself, if you have a, an agreement in place beforehand that if you don't sell it, then it gives you the option. Um, and of course, if you're not in a sale, well, you're going to offer it to a, a trainer or a syndicator or privately. And, and then the timings and length of the lease need to be determined. Um, usually we would go into a, on a typical, on a flat yearling, we'd invariably commit for, for two years and then the breeder, um, the stroke owner can do what they would like with it afterwards. Um, and the and, and, and same with the jumps, because a four-year-old is, is open to sort of, um, uh, in, to sort of um, interpretation, really. Um, and I, the, one th the one thing I think is really important for the leasing, it's probably the most important of all, is catering. The, the lease agreement is important, so you all know where you're, you're going before the start of it. And planning for the best and worst events, worst case eventualities is really important. Um, although you're, you're not likely to be running at Royal Ascot, perhaps, I don't know, but it is, it is best to, to cater for that and assume that you, and to, ca to cover that base, and also if the worst case, you've got an unsound or very slow horse, where are you going? What's in the best interest of the horse? What's in the best interest of, of the breeder? Um, and what's in the best interest of the syndicate? Invariably, invariably one's um, interests are all aligned, but it's important, as we've, there's fairly high profile cases that have gone on, um, that uh, where, where one needs to know where one stands and, that, and, that, and certainly that for syndicate members we found that as well to make sure when anyone buys into a lease syndicate they know they're in a lease syndicate and they don't own equity in the horse um, and so that's that's roughly really where um, uh, where I stand but it's it's fascinating to we've we've been lucky enough to have horses in training um, leased fillies in training for for uh, now our seventh season um, and uh, it, it's in this current environment, it, it seems to have struck up a chord. And as I said, we all want to increase prize money into the industry, but, but leasing can be a side that can help breeders with their margins. Um, breeding a filly and racing her is a good way of, of, uh, of not perhaps maximizing. Um, prize money is not, is not a great thing to pitch at. Um, we have, we, as an example, last season, we had, a, we had a filly who was lucky enough, she won her maiden at Sandown, and she was second in the St. Hugh Stakes at Newbury. Um, and she didn't, uh, and she covered two thirds of her training costs throughout the year, and, and that, that's the situation we are sadly facing with as, as owner breeders. And um, but uh, but as I said, on the positive note, I really think that um, leasing horses can be the option there, and trainers and syndicators can can help. And um, it's it's very exciting. Even even if you do lease a horse, you still share by by owning that horse, you still share in the in the thrill of owning it. And with lots of people, it's it's great fun. And um, uh, as I think, uh, share, sharing sharing a big victory with lots of like-minded individuals is is not to be underestimated. But I, I, any, I, any questions or, um, I'm sorry I've gabbled on for a while.